Thank you for purchasing Appletex Continuous Flow System, or CFS. We will show you how to assemble the CFS tools, set them up correctly for taping, coating, texturing, and how to clean and maintain the tools. Attach up to 150 feet of 3 8 inch Blue Max hose to the pump that you are using. Attach one quarter inch whip to the hose. First, you will notice that there is a trigger valve with a material flow valve and disconnect fitting. Whether taping, coating, or texturing, everything connects up to this mechanism. Screw on the trigger valve to the material line you were supplied. You will notice a material flow valve. Turning it clockwise reduces the material flow and counterclockwise increases the material flow. Attached to the material flow valve is the quick connect. You can attach poles for taping, finishing, or texturing to the quick connects. To attach any pole, pull back on the sleeve, connect, and release. Before using the Mark V, you will need to take out the cylinder filter on the pump. Unscrew the tube, slide out the filter, and screw back on the tube. Leave the screen at the bottom of the piston in place. If it has not been done already, take out the filter in the inline trigger gun. To prime the pump, place it in a bucket of water. Open the relief valve and turn the pump on. Turn up the pressure switch to maximum pressure and the water should start to flow from the relief. Close the pressure relief valve. Point the trigger valve into a bucket and squeeze the trigger until water flows from the trigger valve. Mix the compound to desired consistency for taping. and place the pump into the mix compound. Pull the inline valve trigger to prime the lines with material. Tape applicator is comprised of a valve end, a taping tube with its component parts, the internal CFS taping tube, and the taping head. To assemble, line up the small groove in the taping tube with the corresponding nipple on the taper head and clamp down the SS latches. Attach the arm mechanism and screw down tight. Next, slide the CFS tube into the green taping tube and clamp down the SS latches. Your CFS taper is now assembled. To load the tape, unlatch the tape holder, place the tape on the spool, and reattach holder. Guide the paper tape around the arm. Slide it into the slot and slide the tape until it can be picked up by the advancing mechanism. To advance the tape, pull down on the lever on the sleeve, then push the sleeve toward the taper head. Spool tension should be somewhat loose or paper drag can result. To extend the arm wheel for taping flats or angles, extend the sleeve toward the taper head without the advance lever engaged. 
there is enough spring action on the wheel that with the sleeve fully extended, the wheel can keep its tension against the tape. This tools metering system is not a wheel on the board pulling a cable and thus putting mud on the paper tape. You are the metering system. You control the amount of mud that goes under the tape. You do that by adjusting the material flow knob just above the trigger valve. Turn clockwise for less material, counterclockwise for more material. To start taping, advance tape once, no trigger, advance tape again this time engaging the trigger for just a second. Extend the sleeve to press the tape to the board. Engage the lever and get right up to taping speed. Three inches from the stop cut point, release the material lever, stop tape applicator and cut tape by pulling on the sleeve. We have a scissors cutting mechanism on the CFS taper. If you advance the tape too far, you can grab the tape and pull it back. When taping inside angles, you do not have to advance the tape, so you have a tail to drag into the three-way angle. Just back roll the creaser wheel back into the three-way angle, then pull the creaser wheel out away from the tape, engage air lever, move the head down the corner, and extend the creaser wheel back into the angle six to eight inches away from the three-way angle you will not drag the tape out to the three-way. Attach the CFS box handle to the trigger valve by pulling back and holding the quick disconnect collar and lining up the set pin with the groove in quick disconnect. Push box handle into collar and release. Attach the brake cable to the handle by screwing it down into the nut and adjust until by tightening down the screw. The pin should be adjusted approximately the width of a credit card off of the brake plate. Tighten the nut on the assembly to secure the brake pin position. Mix up the joint compound to your desired consistency for the coat you're going to do. Prime the lines with joint compound by pulling the trigger. After the joint compound is flowing from the box handle, let go of the trigger and attach the box handle to the CFS pressure plate for your box. Slide into box handle studs and hand tighten the wing nuts. Set box to your desired crown and you're ready to coat. Place one hand on the gun handle and the other on the handle near the box. Squeeze the brake lever to lock the brake. Pull the material trigger to activate the flow of material and fill the box. When the box is full, release the material trigger. Approach the wall with the brake locked and place the box on the wall. Release the brake lever and apply pressure to the box. Move down the wall about six inches. Hold the material trigger to keep material flowing into the box. When coming to the end of your coat on the wall, release the material trigger and squeeze the brake lever to lock the brake. Sweep the box off the wall by gradually reducing pressure. Reverse your hand positions and start at the other end of the wall, approaching the wall the same as before. Again, release the brake, move down the wall, oh, about six inches. Hold the material trigger. When approaching the previous stopping point, let go of the material trigger and squeeze the brake lever to lock the brake. Sweep the box off the wall past the previous stop point. For door or window openings, always work from the corner, moving toward the opening. 
just before the wheels reach the opening, squeeze and lock the brake lever, and lift the wheels off of the wall slightly to keep them from dropping into the opening. Then sweep the box away from the wall. To coat vertical wall joints, squeeze the brake lever to lock the brake and begin coating the joint from the bottom up to a height of about 24 inches, keeping the brake locked. Sweep the box off of the wall and begin again at the top of the joint. Release the brake, pull box down the joint about 6 inches, pull the material trigger until you reach the previous stopping point. Then release the material trigger. Squeeze the brake trigger to lock the brake and sweep the box off of the wall. To coat butt seams, open the crown adjustment to the desired setting. Squeeze the brake lever to lock the brake and place the box on the wall. Release the brake lever. Pull the box down the wall about 6 inches and pull the material lever. Continue down the butt seam. Just before the wheels reach the wet seam, release the material trigger and lock the brake lever. Lift the wheels slightly off of the wall and sweep the box off of the wall into the wet wall seam. To change to a different length box handle, first disconnect the brake cable. Then pull back on the quick disconnect collar and pull the handle out of quick disconnect. Reinstall the new box handle by again lining up the pin and reattach the brake cable. Pull the trigger to fill the handle with material. Remove box handle from box by loosening wing nuts and fasten the box to the current box handle. You may also use the box without squeezing the material trigger when moving down the wall. Squeeze the material trigger to fill the box. When the box is full, release the trigger. Lock the brake lever, approach the wall, release the brake lever, and run the box as you normally would. When the box is empty, remove from the wall and squeeze the material trigger again to refill. This method will allow you to only have to squeeze the brake lever when necessary on the wall. The material trigger will not need to be activated when the box is on the wall. For texture, attach the texture pole to the quick connect. You will also need to use an air compressor and air line to deliver and break up the compound to your desire. Attach the air line to the texture attachment. The texture attachment may also be used on any tube length. For coating, attach the coating tube to the quick connect. Screw on the angle head gooseneck to the tube and hand tighten. Start down the angle as you engage the lever. When coming to a stop point, release the lever and travel a few inches further on the board before pulling off the angle head. If you have too much mud for the speed you're going, turn down the flow valve. If you don't have enough mud for the speed you are going, turn up the flow valve. You are adjusting the flow of mud to your coating speed on the wall. For cleanup, drop the pump into a bucket of water and circulate to clean the pump. CFS tubes and the lines. There is a cap 
spring, and ball located in the end cap of the CFS tubes. This does not need to be disassembled for cleaning. If spring, ball, or cap needs to be replaced, simply unscrew and replace in the proper order. First, the cap, flat side down, then the spring, and finally the ball. After the tubes are cleaned, allow the pump to cycle through the relief valve for five to seven minutes to finish cleaning the pump. Danger! Do not attach a garden hose to the pump or lines to clean the tools. High pressured water can cause injury. Follow the pump manufacturer's recommendations for lubricating the pump after each use. Also follow the separate enclosed instructions for lubricating the taper head. For any questions or concerns, please call us at 1-800-827-3721.